Yeah, hello, welcome to another one. So today we are chatting to Jakob Frey, who is uh, an awesome animator who has done many things, but we're going to be chatting about the present. Let's say hello to Jakob. Hello. Hello, nice to meet you, Steve. Uh, so Jakob is originally from Dusseldorf, but in, in Germany, but is currently very nice uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, because he's um, who are you working for? Is, is it the the big the big one? It's the big one. Yeah, I'm currently working for Walt Disney Animation Studios in Los Angeles on the next feature animated film Moana. Amazing! And did this did this film uh, the present that we're going to talk about play a part in getting that job? Uh, it, I think it did because I actually took part in the talent development program at Walt Disney Animation Studios, where graduates from film schools can come in. They get uh, they get a mentor and then they get taught to uh, to work on production at some point. And uh, yeah, I think for the selection process, uh, having made the present was a crucial, crucial point of the of getting the, the spot. Yeah, I bet. Okay, cool. Now, um, got to do this spoiler alert time. Uh, we're obviously going to talk about the present and I would hate to be the person to spoil it for you. So if you haven't watched it, Beneath this video, there will be a link. So go watch the film. Uh, it's just a short film, beautifully made, and then it will all make sense. You can come back and enjoy our conversation as we sort of go deep into talking about the making of uh, that, that film with, with Jakob. Okay, so go take a look now. Where's the origin of this? Where does it start? Um, the reason why I made this short film mainly is because I was... Uh, about to graduate from Film Academy in Ludwigsburg, and the present was my graduation shot. So pretty much I I didn't have to do a film, because I mean, you, at Film Academy, you can pretty much you can also help on other projects. But uh, since I really like directing and I like animating, I kind of wanted to do my own short film. And uh, the present was pretty much the project I picked. Um, it's originally based on a Brazilian webcomic from uh, the comic artist Fabio Koala Cavalcanti. Koala is his artist name. And uh, I found his webcomic one night when I was browsing the internet. I was actually on 9gag.com one night, just like looking at random images. And then all of a sudden this little comic pops up and I read through it. I didn't know what to expect. And then when the, the twist at the end hit me, I was just blown away. And uh, I'm a huge dog lover myself, and with this emotional story, and it, it had the perfect setup for, for being a graduation shot, because it's one set, it's two characters, uh, the mom as a side character, and it felt very manageable, and like the, the story was so strong and emotional that I, I, had, I knew that I had to make a short film out of it. Why don't you stop playing and open the present I got for you? To me? Hello? Oh, I was trying to contact the artist right away and uh, wrote an, an email in English, but uh, unfortunately he never responded to it. And so weeks just kept passing by. I was like, man, I need to do this. I need to do this. How, how do I get to contact him? And then uh, a friend of mine who actually speaks um, Portuguese uh, noticed that he's actually friends uh, with some of her friends on Facebook. And uh, then we together wrote, wrote an, uh, a Facebook message in Portuguese, which he then replied to immediately. And he's just, uh, his English isn't very good, so he didn't, he doesn't really respond to most of the, ah. the English emails. <laughs> and uh, I think he wasn't really sure what to expect uh, when we said that we want to make a short film out of it, because he said like, yeah, sure, go ahead. I think he was <laughs> expecting like a little tiny, like 2D animation or just a I don't know, like, like a student shot, like something simpler. Um, but uh, we put a lot of time and work into it. And when we showed him the result one year later, he was really happy. Uh, he, and he said that he and his wife both cried. And so it was, it was cool to, the, uh, to see that the comic artist himself was really happy with the result. Whoa! Cool! The overall story is the same, but getting to the end I had to readjust it because when I put things into uh, when I gave the images time like certain things didn't work anymore and you can kinda cheat stuff in the comic which you couldn't cheat cheat in the film um, so I had to find like a little new way and also the comic is very um, has very strong emotions from 
I hate you all. I love you. And it just, when I put it into, into uh, a short film format, the boy felt very bipolar and it didn't seem believable. So I was playing a lot of, uh, around with finding the, the nice balance between actually being mad. Ugh. She's got to be kidding me. And then like loosening up and, and being actually happy about the present. What then is your role when making uh, this this film? Well, I mean, I was the director, so it was my responsibility to how the the, the short film looks like, how it will be told. I did all of the editing. I did the um, yeah, pretty much the entire storytelling of it. Uh, I animated everything, and uh, I mean, of course, there was a team involved because doing a 3D animated short film is almost impossible doing it by yourself. I mean, it's possible, but it's a lot of work. And I was glad about any help I could find. Um, but most of the time, it was pretty much uh, Markus Kranzler, a good friend of mine, who was doing the entire lighting rendering process of the uh, the short film, and me. And um, so mainly it was like two people working on it most of the time. But then we also had people helping with setting up the characters for animation or getting the texturing done or having like uh, two people like Falco Pepa and uh, Matthias Beule, they both helped at the end with compositing. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we were a very, very small team and uh, we really worked hard to get everything done in time. Uh, but since it was my project, I was the, the main responsible person for it. I had to pretty much do anything I couldn't find help for. So I'd modeled the entire, entire set, I prepared the textures for it. Uh, it's, I don't know, I, I did a lot of stuff about animating as well, even though I wanted to focus on animation and directing, but yeah, I got stuck doing a lot of other stuff as well. It's, it's amazing. So where does it be, begin, other than thinking about the story? Uh, yeah. it's, are we going back to like a 2D sort of storyboard to, to figure out, the flow of it? What, how, what's the process? Uh, I mean, first I, I really took the, the comic and put it into a timeline and, set, uh, and looked at it and fe uh, tested how it felt. Um, and then I'm like, my craftsmanship isn't really the greatest. So I can really, like, for me, it was easier to just throw it into a 3D scene already in, in my, in, in Otto Maya. And then put in cameras, see how the angles might feel. I, I built a dummy set because I pretty much early on knew how the whole setting should be like. So I just put in some blocks and then played around with the camera, got a um, like a free rig from the internet and, and just like played around a little bit. And um, the whole process actually of finding the, the, ed the edit and the storytelling took quite long because I really want to, sh to be sure that once I jump into animation that I'm not wasting any time by then finding out like, oh, actually, I don't need this. And I already animated it, so I can dump it again. Because uh, this project was all about smart, um, how do you say, well, of being like very efficient. Mm. And uh, because of the small team and the, the deadline approaching for, for graduation, um, we couldn't really do too many mistakes. So I really want to be sure that once I animate, that everything I animate gets into the movie. Of course, there have been some sequences, like tiny pieces, where I felt like, okay, this I don't need this. This can can go out again. But um, overall, like once I started animating, most of the stuff stayed in the movie. I don't know how familiar you are with the whole three D process. Let's presume I'm not at all. Okay. Or, or um, but everybody watching might might not. Because I mean, uh, what what I did, I took a. a a character from the internet where you, that's just um, free to use and I use that one to pose out my scenes at the beginning um, because my character wasn't built yet it needed to be modeled first and rigged rigged is when you well first you model the character so you can pretty much look at it from all sides but you can't move the, the joints yet so there needs to be another process where someone then lays uh, 
bones into the character and then connects those with the mesh. So you can then pretty much move the arms and turn the head. And this whole process wasn't done, but because I already wanted to, to test out stuff, I then took another character, played out with that character. And then once uh, Pascal Florex, who rigged the character, and Anya Vaka, who modeled the character, uh, were done, I then took the character into my scene and did the final setup with that character. It's a little bit complicated. Like the whole, I, I, it's really difficult every time someone explains to me how the 3D process works. It's just like, oh God, where do I start? <laughs> it's a little bit overwhelming to explain something. We'll be outside! For those who might be wondering, what, what software <laughs> are you using for this kind of thing? Um, I mean, for pretty much most of the 3D stuff, we used Autodesk Maya. That was the main tool. Um, for the hair of the boy and the mom and the fur on the dog, we used a plugin called Peregrine Labs uh, Yeti Fur. It's, uh, just for, for doing hair, pretty much. And um, we used Nuke, the, the founder's Nuke, for compositing at the end. Um, the foundry's Hero, 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 for finalizing. Um, what else did we use? Oh, we used Render Man from Pixar. That's the software they use for their films to render the entire film, pretty much to, to give it like the, the final quality with light and shadows. And uh, we did use a little bit of ZBrush in between, but uh, I mean, the main software was all just Maya. I, I had the pleasure of actually bringing uh, my family's dog to Film Academy and having, having her with me for like two or three months or something like that, which was great. And uh, usually dogs aren't allowed at, at Film Academy, but uh, I could argue it as like I need it for a reference and for, <laughs> for the spirit of the film. And uh, so, yeah, she just became a part of it. And then even in my graduation, uh, um, how do you say, like when you go go up and uh, in my presentation, yeah. uh, the, the head of the animation institute was saying like, oh, yeah, you can. You get your diploma, but only if the dog can stay. <laughs> it's like, just like everybody started loving her. It was, it was a really cool. It's a good point, though, but actually, because the, you know, we all know how humans move, but how much, how much did you have to spend getting the movements of the dogs? Uh, that, was, that wasn't actually too difficult. I mean, like, first of all, if you look at a human and he moves strangely, most of the time you notice this right away because you're so used to looking at uh, at humans all the time. So if there is something weird, you usually feel it. Um, but with insects, animals, dogs, like a lot of stuff can be very forgiving because you don't look at dogs that much. Well, dogs maybe like they're, they're more uh, more a part of everyday life. But even there, you just like notice some stuff not right away. Um, but also because I was, I grew up with dogs and, uh, I, I pretty much know or felt, had a good feeling on how they, they move kind of, but, uh, of course having a three leg dog is something completely different than and be, before we started animating, well, well, before I started animating, uh, we also looked at, uh, a three leg dog actually that we found through, um, uh, uh, say, a veterinarian yes. with, uh, with a lady who had a three-leg dog. And that was actually completely surprising. I mean, it's most of the time you, you couldn't really tell who's... It was, there were two dogs, one with four legs and one with three legs. And you couldn't tell which one was missing a leg because the, the three-leg dog was running so fast and so, uh, yeah, fluent uh, that you didn't really notice his disability at all. Only when he stand... Uh, when he stood, he could you could see him like doing little weight shifts, but he was running like crazy, and it was actually funny because every time he was doing a sharp turn, uh, he couldn't really brake properly, so he just like rolled around once <laughs> and then started running in the other direction. It was a uh, really cool, cool, interesting uh, reference shoot. Huh. 
Hope you're enjoying this conversation. If you are, then subscribe to Red Lemon TV on YouTube. Also to Red Lemon at the website with the newsletter, helping you be more creative and also to make more money and be happier as a business creative as well. Well worth checking out. My name, by the way, is Steve Folland and I host a podcast called Being Freelance where I chat to different freelance creatives every single week about well, being freelance. So if you're into this kind of thing, if you are a freelance creative, please find us as well, beingfreelance.com and the, or, or take a look on iTunes. Being Freelance is the podcast where I chat to people each week. All right. Let's get back, though, to this chat. We brought uh, two voice actors on board, uh, Quinn Neely and Samantha Brown, and uh, we then recorded them in in Berlin at a, at a sound studio. It's such a beautiful day outside, you should let some sun inside. It's such a beautiful day outside, you should let some sun inside. Mom! Being a German film, like some people who, who saw it in Germany reacted to it like, oh yeah, so why did you make it in English? It's a German film. Why don't you stick to stick to this language? And I was like, it's... I think it's it's. I always wanted to do it in English because it just it reaches a broader audience. English is a world language, and um, for me, it was very clear from the beginning to to shoot for like a very broad audience. And um, especially with the comic artist being Brazilian, me being German, and then with the internet, it's. I think it's essential to have like a, an English speaking, yeah, setup. Why don't you stop playing and open the present I got for you? As an animator, is is this typical of your style, or has a have you been working on many things that have fed into how this came together? Uh, I mean, I think my main inspiration from why I started doing animation was Pixar and Disney movies. Like ever since I grew up, and so looking at like Finding Nemo was my I think the mo the moment where I said like, man, how do they do this? I want to do this. This looks so cool. The stories are so great, and um, I really wanted to understand how it was done. So I think regarding the look and the quality of of a project, I always wanted to try to get as close as possible to a three D film from Disney or Pixar. And um, like even my earlier projects, I I did three other short films. One was stop motion, which probably then doesn't really uh, count into it, but all the 3D animation projects were, I was really trying to to get c as close as possible to a Disney, Disney quality, um, which I haven't really achieved most of the time. Uh, but still looking back on my previous projects, I'm, I'm very proud of how they, they, they look because it was the best thing I could have done back then. But when it came to making uh, the present, yeah, was that uh, like a whole year dedicated? It was. It was one one entire year dedicated. I didn't do anything but work on that short film, and quite literally, I didn't do anything but work on that short film. <laughs> I was working on it Monday till Sunday for one year and three months, and so did Marcus Kanzler. Uh, he, he uh, him, and I were pretty much on the project most of the time. And it was actually a really cool experience because, I mean, we shared a room with our best friends at, at university. They were doing their short films. And even though we spent a lot of time at university, it was we also had a lot of time in between to do jokes, hang out, play some ping pong, play some some games in the network. It was, uh, it was a fun time. The f film, w when did you finish it? Was it... It was in March 2014, I think. Can you remember when you first showed it to an actual audience? I think that was like the first experience where I showed it. Well, I mean, at Film Academy, you show it, to, you show it every week to your colleagues. So, I mean, I, sh I kept showing it to an audience on and on and on. But they also lose kind of... Um, well, I mean, they've so, they seen it so many times so you can't really yeah. count their reaction. How yeah. useful is that, that process of seeing, you know, 
on a, on a weekly basis? It's, I think it's really good because people then can give you feedback, but uh, it's, I think it's, it's a narrow line because, I mean, feedback is always great, but sometimes it's also confusing. And if a lot of people look at it, then you get a lot of opinions. And like noticing how, how other people uh, reacted to feedback on their short films, I feel like it can be very confusing. Um, but I think in the end, it's like, it's your short film. And I a lot of times there have been moments where I, I got feedback and I implemented it. And yeah. like, this isn't the movie I want to make anymore. And it feels different, even though people like, when they saw it again, they liked it a little bit more. But for me, it just it didn't, didn't fit back to my version. I kept working on the, the stuff that I felt was the film I wanted to make. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's. I think having feedback is a necessary process. I mean, otherwise you just might get narrow-minded, and yeah. uh, sometimes there's just like a golden, like little uh, idea in there that you can use. So yeah. any feedback is always welcome. So it's good to hear other thoughts, but also important to stick to your guns sometimes. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, so that very first showing in front of an audience when it was finished and they had no idea of what was coming. Yeah, yeah I think that was at uh, LA Shorts. Uh, that was pretty much one of the first film festivals we, we showed our short film and I actually flew out to LA. It was, it's, I don't know, it's a crazy feeling actually being in an audience and seeing like, people react to your short film and you kind of created emotions that people react to. And also with a previous film I made, it's called Bob. It's uh, about two hamsters running around the world, which also went uh, viral on the internet in 2010 or 11. Um, it's, it's interesting because people sometimes react to, to scenes or like to parts of the movie where you didn't expect there would be like something specially, special happen. Um, but then... Yeah, I know it's 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 cool sitting among the audience and then seeing them like laugh or like even like on the present like a lot of people always cried at the end, and uh, yeah, it's it's crazy when you think like oh crap, I I made them cry. I mean, of course it's it's I feel a little weird because it's not my my story completely, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know I got great reactions from from most of the screenings. Like people really liked the pacing of the film. And uh, I mean, of course, the the story is. I I love the story. I mean, otherwise, I wouldn't have made the short one. Yeah. You then showed it. I mean, that was one of the first. But you showed it at many film festivals. Yeah. And it picked up many awards. Whoa! <laughs> cool. A year is a very long time to stay focused on on one thing. On three minutes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how. How did you cope with that? Like, did, were there times when when you found yourself floundering or, or you know, not not in love with it? I don't know. No, I mean, like after a time, you of course you don't know anymore if it's like, is this film really funny? Is it emotional? Does does it even work at the end? Do you believe in the emotional change of the character? Does his mom feel weird just coming in, putting a present on the table, and then walking away? Um, so it's, there are a lot of things that you start questioning. Um, but a friend of mine always said, like, if you, when you make a short film, you always have to remember the first moment when you thought about an idea or when you read a story, how you felt. And I remember how blown away I was reading the story. And I just kept thinking about this moment. It's like, this is working, this is working, this is working and it will be fine. Um, but uh, I mean, I don't really mind working on a short film for that long. It's I like doing uh, the work I do. I can consider myself really lucky that I really love my job. And um, yeah, I don't know if I if I, when I do a project, I want to do it as best as I can. And I would rather spend more time working on it than actually doing like a weird compromise and saying like, okay, this is done now. I could it could have been better, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I prefer working on it as much as I can. Hmm. When it comes to your own work, because so presumably now you're, you know, you're employed, you're working on, on, uh, you know, on an immense project. Mm -hmm. Do you still have your own side projects, your own? 
I like I would I don't want to stop doing short films. I mean, it's I always want to keep working on my own projects. Of course, well, now that I'm not a student anymore, I have less time. And before that, I was working full time on a short film, and it took very long. <laughs> so now that you have like an evening to work on it, uh, it's it gets more and more complicated. Um, but yeah, I still keep working on my own stuff, and uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't stop doing that. Awesome. Um, thank you so much uh, for sh- you know sharing uh, your experience of making the present. It's a brilliant My film. Pleasure. Congratulations. Um, I mean, and you've you've had so much success with it already, and um, uh, yeah, all for best with the with the future. Not you know not just with uh, the big Disney type projects, but with your own work as well. We look forward to seeing that. Uh, make thank sure you, you very much. Follow Jakob on. Uh, we'll, we'll put all of his details, of course, but on on the especially on Vimeo, for example, so that you can see when that next one. Uh, drops uh, in the future. Mom, we'll be outside. Jakob, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, it was a pleasure having you, uh, talking with you. <laughs> and sorry if my English might have been a little bit weird in between. Like I'm a German speaker. Your English was better than mine. Enjoy LA. Thank Pleasure you. to meet, mate. Thank you so All much. Right. Ta-da. Bye-bye. Bye.